Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to All Saints on Zoom. I was hearing from Andy earlier on that we are unique in Bath and Wells Diocese doing this on Zoom, and uh, and it's great to be able to gather together as a church and not simply watch a film of us. So uh, this morning's uh, service is centered around Psalm 84, and if you've got Psalm 84 to hand, you might like to have it just nearby. <clears throat> Pardon me. And Andy's topic is about living close to God. Now with the, uh, with the geography of, uh, of Israel and uh, the way that local worship and uh, central worship worked in the Psalms, this is a personal journey of the psalmist and, uh, and he's looking forward to gathering together like we are uh, on, a, on a Sunday morning, he's looking forward to gathering together with all of uh, all of his uh, countrymen uh, on those occasions when they have a big festival in the temple. And uh, as it says in, in um, verse 5, blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. So like the Israelites in the Bible, we're going to mix the personal prayer and the corporate singing in our worship this morning. And we're going to start with our own personal preparation for the presence of God. So let's pause for a moment of quiet and bring our own hearts before God. We'll pray together the collect for purity which will come up on the screen God knows the secrets of our hearts he knows whether Psalm 84 verse 2 is true of us my soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God so let's acknowledge the, the deep desires of our hearts to ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to pray this prayer together. As we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalmist assures us, blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. So we've, we've done our best for a uh, national worship gathering. If you can sing along, uh, if you're not embarrassed by those around you, or at least hum along, we're in the Royal Albert Hall uh, with the All Souls Orchestra as we sing together, How Great Thou Art.
Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to uh, Tim for that introduction. Just a few items of uh, church family news for us. I've just had the privilege of leading the eight o'clock, which was, as it were, a full church. We had a full church at eight o'clock. We had about 22 people, which is the maximum number of bubbles just about that we can uh, get into the service. But it was a privilege to be able to do that. Uh, Stomp, our children's ministry, will be meeting today, but at four o'clock in the churchyard. So if you've got uh, families or you know of families that might be interested in that, then uh, please turn up at four or get in contact with Libby. Then tomorrow, start the week, is at 9.15, start the week prayers. Uh, there's a Zoom uh, link for that, and Peter Chu will be leading. But please note that we know start the week for the following two Sundays, until uh, Mondays, until the 7th of September after tomorrow. Uh, next Sunday, there'll be a, just a Zoom service at 10.30, with David Sharp leading and David Willis preaching. And if you have time this week, can I encourage you to... Uh, read Psalm 96 before then, as we look at what the Psalms have to say about the reasons to fear God. And as you'll, I'm sure, know, we are still carrying on working at how we can get back our services into the church buildings. And here's a plan uh, for the coming uh, months, uh, hopefully from September, not quite sure when and when we might be able to start, but here's a plan for us. We're going to carry on having. Uh, eight o'clock traditional service of Holy Communion and morning prayer uh, from the Book of Common Prayer. And that will be most weeks uh, as it normally is. The next one of those will be on the 30th of August. And then 10.30, we're going to have uh, a service in church, sometimes with that more contemporary feel, and sometimes with the traditional pattern of uh, common worship, morning prayer or Holy Communion. And what is our hope is that we'll soon be able to film that service and stream it live via the website so that people can join us from home who can't get to All Saints, either because we can't all fit in because we can only get 20 or so bubbles in, or because uh, you need to be shielding or not there for whatever reason. Now, please pray that we get cameras for that because obviously we need to put cameras into church for that. And, Everyone in the world seems to want cameras at the moment, so there is a supply issue. And the plan is for Stomp to meet at 10.30 in the church centre uh, at that time, uh, which is all very exciting, and we're working out how we can do that within the guidelines as well. Then at 5.30, we're planning to have our main Zoom service, which will have that 5.30 informal feel. This will be from sometime in September, and we hope fairly soon to be able to do that with some people meeting together in the TCCC while we're also Zooming it at the same time. So I don't know quite how that's gonna work out, but we'll, that's what we want to do so that we're feeding all different uh, uh, members and parts of our church family. And the tentative plan as well is to restart services at St. Michael's Angersley from Sunday the 20th of September uh, just before their patronal festival. Uh, there are still, as I'm sure you're aware, lots of questions to sort out. Thank you again for your patience and understanding. And we do lament genuinely as the psalmists lament. We lament not being able to meet and we cry out to God to have mercy on us. Here's a few important things to say uh, as we do get back together. We certainly can't sing together at any of our gatherings. Only one singer is permitted and they must be appropriately distanced. Uh, we must still be socially distanced, so only 20 or so bubbles. We must all be wearing masks, not in our Zoom meetings, uh, but in our uh, church gatherings of any description, except those involved in leading and preaching and singing. We can listen to music and we can join in the said prayers and we will be together, which is uh, brilliant news. We also hope to open the Hive Cafe again in early September from uh, just 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon initially, uh, depending on various things. And again, pray for that. Jenny is working hard to get the TCC open again to some of our hirers, and we're trying to get uh, our children's and young people's activities back in place as well.
Now, as many of you know as well, we were due to uh, be uh, at camp at the moment. This is the time of year when ventures were due to be happening for our young people. Uh, we were due to be at Sparkford this week with Pulse. But Ruth and Libby did lead on a Brymore virtual venture last week, so uh, finishing last weekend. And that was a huge success. They had about 40 or so, I think, young people, or 30 or 40 young people. And Ruth is now going to tell us a bit about that and share something of how virtual Brymore worked for the 11 to 14s. Ruth, over to you. Hello. Um... I've just discovered that I can't spotlight myself, so hopefully you can all see me. Um, we, we did a virtual venture, as Andy said. Um, so the way that worked was each morning, um, we had a YouTube video to work, watch um, that had a bit of drama. Um, the, the idea was that two, uh, two of the leaders were intrepid explorers looking for the source of the M5. Um, so that was the story for the week. Um, we had some Bible teaching on Jesus's I am statements. Um, there was worship songs and then there was a daily challenge. Um, so I've got a video to show you of mine and Libby's attempt at a Rube Goldberg machine, um, which if you don't know what it is, hopefully this will explain. It didn't quite go to plan as you'll see. Um, I have to admit that was after three hours. Um, so at that point I decided to give up and do something more useful. Um, so then every evening we had a Zoom call um, where we had leaders and young people. Um, we spent an hour together playing games, uh, reviewing the daily challenge, showing each other videos of what we'd achieved. Um, a short Bible study based on the earlier talk that we did in small groups um, and a thought from Psalm 103 it turned out really well. There was 20 young people, including two of ours from Troll, um, and we had a really good time together. It made me miss camp so much, um, but I, it's made me look forward to next year even more. Brilliant, thank you Ruth. And we're now going to go straight to Libby, and Libby is going to give us our church family time all age for today. Hi everyone. Okay, so um, over the summer we've been thinking about the uh, um, gifts of the Spirit and today we're going to think about kindness. Um, and I'm just going to read, um, well, uh, I'm just going to read to you from Luke and this is from the message version. Um, and it talks about what Jesus said about kindness. So it says, here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do not expect a pat on the back. Run of the mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do not expect a medal. Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think it's charity? I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give without expecting return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives towards us, generosity and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind. You be kind. Um, so... We've been thinking about kindness um, and what I'd like you to do in a second, um, I'm going to move the computer in a, in a minute to do uh, to show you something um, and I'd like you to think while I'm doing that about how somebody has been kind to you this week or perhaps how um, you can see God's kindness around you. James, are you going to help me? 
jug overflowing with kindness. Um, we're now going to sing, I think, and we're going to sing All Through History, um, which is a song that tells us about how God was kind and faithful to his people all the way through the Bible. <laughs>
get to know our God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him. We now have our prayers for intercession, and we'll start with the collect for the day. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our prayers of intercession. Thank you, Lord, for your day today and the opportunity to gather, to gather together, mostly online and some of us in person. We continue to lift our world to you as individuals, families, nations and their leaders grapple with the health and economic impacts of COVID. We pray for continued acts of kindness and true moments of joy and ongoing wisdom for everyone we all work our way through this. The impacts of COVID are so different for each individual and each nation, Lord. It is hard to know exactly what to pray, but we thank you that you are there for all. Please help us to share your word with others so that they may know your guidance and strength. We also pray for your protection for the most vulnerable and that we would play our part as a church and as individuals in providing this. We lift to you other places of conflict and unrest in your world, Lord. At the moment, Belarus, Yemen and South Sudan and others that others may know of. Please bring justice where it is needed and provision and protection for those who are suffering. We thank you for the young people in our church and worldwide, for the difference they can make in our community and for our futures. We think of those who have received or are about to receive exam results. Please guide them in their next steps. We pray for parents, teachers and students preparing to return to school, college or new types of work. We ask for your ongoing protection and safety and for an enjoyable and productive experience. Thank you for your church worldwide and here in Troll. Thank you for the trial staff team and the many volunteers who work hard to make your name known and your love seen. We thank you for the online youth camps run recently and pray for the children's activity days still to come. These might be a highlight of the summer for all involved. We lift to you the week ahead and pray that each of us, whatever our situation, may know your peace and do your will. Amen. And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
where we started our service with a big hymn of praise and we'll finish with a congregational sound. But our next song is a quieter, more personal song of response. Where we, like David in the Psalms, can give our adoration, honour and worship to our Lord and Saviour. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. 
The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold. From those who walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Great, thank you very much everyone who's uh, been uh, praying and reading, that's wonderful. Let's pray as we turn to this psalm. Heavenly Father, as we journey now with this psalmist who speaks to us by the Spirit of Christ, may we have our hearts and minds similarly moved and drawn to you. May we, in these coming minutes, be able to join in saying, O Lord Almighty, blessed, happy, is the one who trusts in you. Amen. What are you most missing? So in this tough and strange season as COVID-19 continues to lurk with deadly earnest and affects all aspects of our lives, what are you most missing? Is it simply the old normality, knowing that the new normal is going to be uh, different. Perhaps we're missing the hive and God willing, as I've uh, said earlier, we'll be able to open in early September thanks to Val, Fran, Dot, Jenny and others. Perhaps you're missing normal holidays or a house move or maybe it's better health. For many we're missing face-to-face -face contact, intimacy, friendship, seeing one another. That was the most common response in the feedback that I asked for uh, when I asked people, what are you missing and want to have back? The answer was being together, whether that be singing God's praises together in worship, sharing communion together, serving together, or simply being together in church, in school, with friends, or whatever. And the underlying sense is that we miss, we miss belonging. We miss, as it were, home which may not be a place as such, but a place associated with special people, a place associated with being together, where we experience that sense of belonging, of security, of being valued, loved and known for whom we are, uh, where we don't have to pretend, and where we can give of ourselves, because we know we're known, as it were. I'm going home today, in the sense that I'm going to see mum and dad for the first time since February. All of us are packing up, sleeping in the tent for a couple of nights in their garden. It's been the family home for over 53 years, but it's not the place really, is it? It's the people, it's mum and dad that I'm looking forward to seeing. Whatever your experiences of lockdown uh, have been and continue to be, I suspect that we will have a deeper glimpse, a deeper, a deeper empathy with the psalmist and their desire to be home that we read here in Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Now we don't know when the psalm was written. The music group known as the Sons of Korah that is the, in the introduction to the psalm, may have written it before the Temple of Solomon was destroyed and before the people of God were taken off into exile in Babylon with uh, people like Daniel. So it could have been sung expectantly by God's people as they pilgrimed to Jerusalem, to the city of God, to Zion, for the festivals that they shared together. They were longing to experience that time with God and his people. Or it could have been written, this psalm, during the exile and would certainly have been sung by God's people then. There's this deep sense of longing to be home again, which makes it appropriate for believers like us as we too live, as the Apostle Peter writes in his letter, as exiles and strangers in the world, longing for God's presence, for his peace, for, for dwelling with him, as it were. Now, this psalm isn't going to give us an ABC as to the facts of how to bring us a closeness with God. Rather, it is a song to stir our hearts. It's been well said that there is a longing written all over this psalm. And yes, while the psalm is personal, my soul yearns, my heart and flesh cry out. 
there is still the frustration for us that we can't, because of lockdown, sing this song together as it would have been sung by God's people. But I pray that nevertheless, that now as we feast on the truths that we see, that a warmth and a delight will well up within us. And we see, first of all, a longing for the blessings of home. Verse one. It's effectively, he's effectively saying, what a dearly loved place is your dwelling place, God. I can't think of anywhere else that I'd rather be. And then with verse two, that intensifying of the feelings. For them, of course, the dwelling of God was the temple where God was present on earth. And then verse three, maybe as this son of Korah wrote this psalm, he remembered being in the temple and looking up because, of course, it was open to the sky and seeing a sparrow finding a nesting place, a swallow coming to rest under one of the eaves and was reminded that if the almighty and living God has that concern for a tiny sparrow or swallow bringing her young into the world, how much more is he concerned for us, his people? And the Lord Jesus makes that same link, of course, in that Matthew's gospel. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Here is a place where the weakest and most vulnerable will be loved and cared for. So the image of the nesting uh, bird and birth can bring comfort to those of us who are grieving or worried at this time. Maybe for a child, maybe for a baby or for a parent or a loved one. There is home, verse three, for the sparrow, for the smallest unborn child, for all. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than a sparrow. And verse four, blessed are those, however small and weak, who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. It's a declaration of blessing and the first of three such declarations in the psalm. But we must remember that God no longer dwells in a building. Yes, it's great news that we can meet again, uh, a few of us, in our beautiful 13th century churches. And David is leading a service in the church uh, as I speak to you now. There's some meeting in that church building. And yes, it's great that we will soon be able to, hopefully, live stream services from church into our homes. Yes, it's great that the church is open for private prayer. And I will, I pray, be a place where people can be quiet and meet God in prayer as we read his word and enjoy the stillness without perhaps the distractions of home. But God does not dwell in church buildings. The New Testament is wonderfully clear that Psalm 84 finds its fulfillment not in a place, but in a person, by the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit. So as we learned in Ephesians last term, uh, for through Christ, we all have access to the Father by one spirit. Or as we read in our Christmas readings in John, the word, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling, tabernacled, templed among us, and in whom the life of the living God appeared. Or as we read in the letter to the Hebrews, he is the sacrifice for sinners offered at the altar as he died on the cross. Friends, let me encourage you to go away and read Psalm 84, verses 1 to 4 particularly, but all of it, through the lens of fulfilment in Christ. As we do so, we express the same yearning that is in Christ's heart for his church and looks forward, of course, to a yet greater fulfilment of the time when the dwelling place of God, of Jesus, will be with his people for all eternity picked up in that very last chapter of Revelation. Yes, I'm looking forward, of course, uh, desperately to going home today. And I'm sure many of us long for that sense of belonging again. But no home or dwelling place in this age, no matter how happy or secure, can give us 
ultimate security. Our deepest longing ought to be to go home in that final sense of living with Jesus in the new heavens and the new earth. And allow this psalm to lift your eyes to that final and beautiful home, that dwelling place with the Lord. And yet the psalm doesn't end at verse four. If there is blessing in being home, which we see in verses one to four, there is also blessing in going home and the journey itself, which is spoken of here in this language of pilgrimage in verses five to seven. And it's got that sense of loving home so much and so wanting to be there that actually the journey there is part of it. Every step of our lives to be part of that journey home even when that journey involves barren and dry times through the valley of Bacar, verse six. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, Lord, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Even as they pass through the valley of Bacar, they make it a place of streams. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. Perhaps we get that sense of refreshing from the rains that we've had in the last 24 hours. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Yes, outwardly, there may be seasons of decay, of age and of grief. And we may be beset by the miseries of sin and its consequences. But inwardly, we can experience a wonderful daily renewal by the spirit of this same living God. Can I encourage us, please? to make a time with God a daily priority, dwelling with God daily, not just as we gather together on Sundays or maybe in growth groups, but feeding on his word and on his promises, being spurred on to holiness as we read his commands, being comforted by knowing his love and his grace and daily being reminded of those promises, bowing in prayer and praise to him each day, and being equipped for service each day. There are so many good uh, Bible reading notes or apps or prayer guides and songs to use, but it is a discipline to do that on a daily basis. Verses eight and nine though, when we get to verses eight and nine, comes a bit of a strange surprise. Have a look if you've got your Bibles open, because suddenly the Psalmist Praise for the Messiah. Verse eight, hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Look on your shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. So the prayer is that God will look with favor on the Messiah, that he will show his favor and blessing upon him. Why? Because all the blessings of Zion, in other words, all the blessings of Zion is now the church, of being church, and of the journey to our ultimate home in heaven are to be found only because of and in union with God's anointed king. And as we've already discovered, that king is our Lord Jesus Christ. We get these blessings because they were first poured out on Christ. And isn't it remarkable that this psalmist all those years before was praying for the coming of the Messiah? And finally, the psalmist returns to the theme of pilgrimage in verses 10 to 12 and encourages his listeners and us to keep going faithfully. Verse 10, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. And he's using a comparison. It's better to be with God's people serving in the church than drifting off from the journey, from the pilgrimage of life into the temptations of the wicked. Can I speak for a moment? into a concern that I have for us as churches at St. Michael's and at All Saints as we emerge from lockdown. Yes, there have been some good things, some small good things about the last 
five or six months, we've had a number who are new to church. There were one or two new faces today, which is fantastic because of these online services who may or may not have come to us in our buildings. Yes, we've also had some new community links uh, with Troll Community Support Group. The church have been a part of that and with the homeless shelter at Cannons Grove. But I fear that there have also been a number who are in danger of drifting away from the pilgrimage of life being a disciple of the Lord Jesus on that pilgrimage to being home with him who drifted away who may have got into the habit of not coming to church on the zoom on Sunday and oh found it maybe quite appealing and maybe distracting oh why don't we go for a walk at the beach instead of going to church why don't we go in the woods or now why don't we go to see friends on a Sunday morning rather than going to church who seem to now enjoy those good things. I'm not saying they're wicked and evil things. You know, going for a walk's not wicked, but being distracted, drawn away from the pilgrimage journey and from meeting with God's people. Friends, one of the great strengths that I've noticed at All Saints and St. Michael's is the way that we all look out for one another. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful as well for me knowing that you know that I can't do it all myself. It's, it's a great relief that we're all in this together. But we must now, in this season, I sense, be looking out for and loving each other. Because never before, perhaps in the history of the church, has the encouragement of Hebrews and that passage in Hebrews been so important as now as we come out of lockdown. Hebrews 10 verse 24, I believe, is a verse for our time. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. And I can't possibly do this on my own. Who can you spur on this week? Who do you know that perhaps you haven't seen on Zoom? And you think, oh, I wonder what's happened to so-and-so. Can I just encourage them with a word? Maybe even call them, maybe bump into them, maybe arrange to see them. Who of your friends in the church family has been missing from this pilgrimage journey who you'd love to draw back to be alongside us? As the church uh, comes together again in some small way, let it be a mark that we are spurring one another on. And as the psalm draws to a close, that final verse is the promise of verse 11. It's been a precious promise for many suffering believers and pilgrims over church history that no good thing does the Lord withhold from those whose walk is blameless. It is true for all who trust in Christ, the blameless one who makes us blameless, that nothing God gives us is anything other than good. He may give us ill health, persecution, uh, troubles, and more. And I know that it's hard, we know it's hard to hold on to when we are suffering, sometimes inexplicable hurts or griefs and anguish. And yet this verse is true. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. It cannot have been easy for the Lord Jesus to believe this verse. It is true for him and it is true for us. As the preacher and writer uh, Christopher Ash writes on this verse, God our Heavenly Father will never give to us anything except what he knows in his infinite wisdom and kindness to be truly what is best for us. We will often not understand how this can be so, and yet it is true. To trust this promise will bring surprising springs of life-giving water to us as we go through the valleys of Bacar, with our hearts set on the day when the dwelling place of God will at last be our dwelling place too. Let's be quiet before God for a moment. I'm going to read a couple of verses 
from this psalm again slowly and then I'm going to uh, hand over to our for our final hymn our final song and I'd like you to listen to the words of that song all I once held dear that are particularly appropriate about our closeness with God but before we listen to that let me read a few verses from the psalm again quietly let's pray how lovely is your dwelling place lord almighty better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere i would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my god than dwell in the tents of the wicked for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. Great. That's wonderful. It's lovely to sing big and to think personal at the same time. Just before we have a final blessing, afterwards we will continue as usual in breakout groups for a chat and catch up. Please leave 
if you want to, you don't feel you have to stay. But if you do stay, you'll be put in a group with anything from four to six rather randomly selected people. And we won't be coming back together as a big group after that. So when you need to leave, just uh, say goodbye to one another and leave the meeting. Now let's pray for our final blessing. We started longing to be in the presence of the Lord and we traveled with Andy through Psalm 84 and we ended singing knowing you Jesus there is no greater thing. So this is the blessing that the Lord appointed for uh, his people to be blessed with in that uh, great gathering. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>